Get loose real quick, stretch a little bit. This is an awesome song. But just it really is like a prayer as we as we get together, as we start off, guys, just that but this is a prayer for the week that we want to see God's kingdom, his family grow. So just be thinking about that.
sing a song that just talks about how Jesus is better than, than anything that the world has to offer, anything that goes on in our lives. Just sing this out. He's better. And he's our King. There's no other so sure and steady. I hope it's held in your hand.
from it. And I just pray that we would continue to believe, God. Help our faith to believe. Make our hearts believe, God, that you are better. No matter what we're going through, no matter how good or bad our lives are, God, you are so good beyond anything else. And we love you so much, God. Speak to us, teach us, make us more like you. In your name. Lights up a little bit. I have lights. Everybody can see you. Hey, there we go. Hey, everybody. Wow, that was weak. What's up? Hola. Good to see you guys. So excited to be with y'all this week and uh, share with you from God's Word. Um, I think for a couple of reasons. One, I just want to let you know um, how much personally I just love uh, students and. Love being with you guys and your energy and your passion for God. But second of all, let me, let me share something very cool with you just from our elders uh, as I was with them this weekend. And that's this, that our elders uh, really believe in y'all and really do believe that God uh, is going to do something powerful through you guys. So <clears throat> I just want you to feel that because uh, sometimes I think students can get the mindset like that you, um, you know, we don't see you as important as adults or something like that. And that's just not true. And we love y'all and are excited about what God's doing in your life. And I'm excited to be with you this week. And I know I'm going to learn as much being with you guys as you are with me. And so uh, thanks for being here this week and for inviting me to be with y'all. I'm really excited about that. So uh, I can't wait to see what God is going to have for us. And uh, I do want to share with you um, before I get started, just that God um, doesn't just want to do things for you, but he wants you personally. He wants your heart and he's pursuing you. And so um, I'm not going to assume everybody in the room is at a certain place spiritually. And so some of this, even tonight, might feel like a little foundational. But I just want to make sure before you try to go out and share Christ with people, like that you have Christ in you and that you have a relationship with God that you want to share with people because you're excited about Him. And uh, more than God just wants to use you to do something great, He wants you personally. He cares about you. He knows your name. He knows your issues. He knows your family. And uh, he's calling you to himself this week. So the theme this week is what word? Follow. follow. You got to say it louder. Follow. Okay, so that's our theme for the week is follow. And we're going to talk about what following means, what it looks like. Uh, follow is the word we use in our culture now primarily on Twitter, right? We say how many followers do you have? Is that what we mean? That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus is you follow him on Twitter? Everyone's like, do I say yes or no? Like, is that a trick question? No, that's not what we mean, right? We don't mean when you follow Jesus by following him on Twitter, where you just like track different things that he says and you like them or retweet them. That's not what it means to follow Jesus, okay? We mean something a little bit more than that. I need two volunteers to illustrate follow. No, okay, you can't volunteer. Thanks for volunteering. Them. Come on, I need two people. Be courageous. Jacob, come on. Come up here. Let's go. Two volunteers. Two volunteers. Come up on the stage with me. All right, so does everybody know names? Tell them your name. Jacob McBride. Cyan. Cyan, okay, so our two volunteers. So uh, let's make Cyan the leader and we'll make Jacob the follower, okay? Everybody tracking where we're going? All right, so we've got to start over here. Come this way, Cyan. Okay, so science heading that direction. Okay, I did this when I was volunteering in the uh, first grade class the other day, walking them out to the uh, playground because they were kind of bored just walking in a straight line. And so I would say, uh, don't just walk with me. I'd say, follow me and do whatever I do. Okay, so you walk that direction slowly and whatever, whatever she does, you mimic her actions and see if you can get him to follow you. Ready? Go. Okay, come back this way. Okay, do it one more time. Be a little crazier. All right, do it, Cyan. Here we go. Follow her, Jacob. Dance like a chicken. Cartwheel. All right, give him a round of applause. Thank you for coming up here. Thank you for helping out. 
Okay, what did Jacob have to do to follow Cyan? I, I can't hear you. Say it louder. Watch her. That was number one, right? Could he do what she was doing if he wasn't watching her? No. First of all, had to look at her and see what she was doing. What else? Say it. What else? What else did he have to do besides watch her? Okay, mimic what actions she had. What else? Act it out. He had to actually do it himself. He had to use his body to do what she was doing. Okay, what else? I, I, say it. Humble himself. Why was that? Because he had to act like a chicken in front of all of y'all? Okay, good. Somebody else has something else over here. He followed her. Yeah, but what does that mean? What did he have to do to follow her? Walk behind her. He had to keep up with her, right? Like he got too far away. She got too far away. He couldn't see her anymore. Okay? Giving you a picture of what it means to follow. Write down this verse, Matthew 4, 18 to 22. Matthew 4, 18 to 22. Be one of our key verses for the week just to kind of think of this word follow. Scripture says this, as he was walking Jesus along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea since they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Three times we see the word follow, right? Say it out loud. Follow. Follow. Three times in here. Jesus calling. Okay, four people in these verses to leave what they were doing and follow him. This was Jesus' original call to his original disciples. Same thing. Okay, just what we just practiced here. They had to leave behind what they knew, leave behind relationships that they knew, leave behind fishing nets that they knew so that they could follow Jesus' footsteps. Now, if you fast forward to the end of Matthew, write down Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. What we call the Great Commission. The last words of Jesus in the book of Matthew, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, when Jesus commissions his disciples. Now here's what he says to them. Jesus came here and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, here's the connection. Stay with me. Make Disciples. A disciple is a student who obeys his teacher. A disciple is someone who obeys his teacher. So Jesus calls these guys and says, come follow me. And they walk with him for three years. They learn to do life just like he does life. And at the end of those three years, after they've seen him crucified and resurrected, then Jesus turns around to them and says, now you go make disciples of me. Now you're my followers, go make followers of me who will also be my students and do what I taught you to do, right? So he says in this passage, make disciples, and he says in verse 20, here's the phrase I want you to see, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. To follow means to walk or travel behind someone. It basically, if you just looked it up in the dictionary, it would say to go where someone else is going. That's what it means. It's real simple. To go where someone else is going. Now I want to say at the outset, just to make sure we're, we're keeping our ideas straight in our mind. Okay, this is real important to me. No one follows Jesus perfectly. So here's the message of the Gospels, the New Testament. Ready? Jesus calls these guys, come follow me. He starts out, they're walking behind him, and then Jesus dies for his followers who are following him. Why does Jesus have to die for the people who are following him? 
because they can't follow him. Tracking with me? This is really important. He calls them, come do what I do. They can't do what he does. And so Jesus has to die for those who follow him. This is where Christianity is different from every other religion. If we were here tonight, we were going to say, we're going to teach you how to be followers of Muhammad. We're going to teach you how to be followers of Buddha. We would just get you up here and we'd say, here's what Buddha did. Here's what Muhammad did. Just do what they did. That's what we'd say. But that's not Christianity. Christianity is do what Jesus did, but know from the outset that you can't do it. That's a weird message in this. No from the beginning, you can't do it. That's why Jesus died, had to die for his followers. That's why the first invitation of the Christian faith is not follow. Even though that's the theme for the week. That's not the first invitation of Christianity. The first invitation is repent and... What is it? Repent and... Believe. So Jesus shows up on the scene before Matthew 4, before he says follow, and he begins to announce that the kingdom's at hand, and he says repent and believe. Because here's what we have to do. Students, listen. We turn from ourselves, we trust in Jesus, and then we commit to follow him. you got to get the order right. We turn from self, we trust in Jesus and what he did for us, and then we commit to follow him. The invitation you're going to go out and share during Rock the Rock with all these kids is not for them to get their life straight it's not the invitation for them to start doing good and start acting right and start being better little children. That's not the message. The message you're sharing is there is someone who came who died for you, who rose for you, who offers you life if you'll repent and believe in him. That's the message, right? That's the good news. That's the gospel. You see, the first disciples who were invited to follow Jesus, they didn't get it. For three years, they misunderstood him. They questioned his teachings. They stumbled in their obedience, but Jesus didn't give up on them. He kept calling them again and again, keep following me, keep following me. So for you and I, when we believe in Jesus as the Son of God, the resurrected Savior, we set out, out after him. But we do that because we know that he gave his life for us. You see, we follow the one who purchased us with his blood. And that's where Christianity is different. The message of the gospel is not follow Jesus so you can get to heaven. The message of Christianity is Jesus paid for you so you can follow him. Mm. Jesus paid for you. He gave it all so that you could follow him. We are willing to follow him and here's the three things I want you to think about about the reason we follow him. Because he is worthy, because he died for us, and because his way is best. Let me say it again. He is worthy, he died for us, and his way is best. This is why I have no problem standing in front of you guys tonight and saying you should follow Jesus. You should give your life to him. Because he's worthy, he died for you, and his way is best. Now let's think about all the other people that we're called to follow in our culture. Lady Gaga has 40 million followers on Twitter. I don't really get that. I'm serious. Like, What are we trying to learn from following Lady Gaga on Twitter? She had a Diet Coke today. <gasps> like, What is it about our culture? I'm serious. That we're so enamored with celebrities, that we want to know everything that they did so we can do what they did. The question you need to ask about everybody you're enamored with, that you follow, that you track, that, that you listen to everything that they eat and that they listen to and they watch and whatever, you're following, you're trying to mimic your life after their life. Here's the question you need to ask. Are they worthy of you following them? Are they worthy of you following them? That basketball star you love and you're like, oh, I just want to be like LeBron James. I just idolize him, just want to be like LeBron. Is he worthy of you following him with your life? That's the question you got to ask. The second question is, what has that person done for your good? Jesus died to save you from your sins. 
What has this other person done that you're following? What have they done for you? That, that popular kid at school that you're just like, if I could just be like them and everybody would like me like them and I, if, if everybody would want to be around me and you just try to follow that, that popular kid at school, are they worthy of you following them? What have they done to help you for your good? And then is what they're saying and teaching for your best? This is why I don't even say to you guys, follow your pastor or follow your parents, even though you should respect the authority in your life. Listen, the call of Christianity is to follow Christ, to follow Jesus. He alone is worthy. He alone has died for you, and he alone is doing what is best. Here's why I say all that to intro. If you don't believe that, you won't listen to anything else I say the rest of this week. Because the rest of this week, here's all I'm going to give you. I'm just going to give you each day, I'm going to give you one trait that Jesus had that we should follow. But if you don't believe that he's worthy of you following, if you don't believe he died for your sins and rose again, if you don't believe that what he modeled and what he taught is best for your life, you won't follow him. You'll follow Lady Gaga and LeBron James and whoever else at school you think is popular. That's who you will follow. You know that's true. Because that's where we are as human beings. It's not just a high school thing or a junior high thing. It's a life thing. I can never figure out why exactly we do the things we do. Why do we dress the way we dress? And why do we talk the way we talk and cut our hair the way we cut our hair? All that. Because there's somebody out there we admire. We say, I want to be like that person. The invitation for this week is that that person you should admire is Jesus. He's the one that's worthy, given his life, and that knows what's best so that we should follow him. The first Christians in the New Testament were called this, and I want you to say it with me and learn it. They were called the people of the way. Say it, the people of the way. Can you say it? People of the way. Write that down. They were called people of the way. W-A-Y. What they meant by that phrase was they, they meant two things. They believed Jesus was the way to God, because Jesus had said that. I am, John 14, 6, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he said, I'm the way to God. You want to get to God? You want to spend eternity in, in heaven? I'm the way to that destination. So they called Jesus the way. But they also meant not just that Jesus was the way to God, but that Jesus had showed us the way to live. Jesus had showed us the way to live. This is what it means, students, to be a Christian, to be a Christ follower. It means you put your trust in Jesus as the way to God and that you set the course of your life on Jesus as the way to live. Are you tracking with me? Those are the two commitments of a Christian. You've said, I believe Jesus is the way to God, and I believe Jesus has set the way to live. Both are equally important. The way of Jesus is not just a way to get to heaven. It's also a way to live. But the way of Jesus is not just a way to live. It's also a way to get to heaven. It's both. In short, let me give you that in one phrase. We trust Jesus as Savior, and we follow Jesus as Lord. We trust Jesus as Savior, and we follow Him as Lord. That's the Christian message. So maybe you now know a little bit more when the pastor gets up and says, Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? When the New Testament says, Is Christ your Lord and Savior? That's what it means. To be your Lord means to be your master, the one that you follow. To be your Savior means the one that's your substitute. He's the one who died in your place. So to be a Christian means what? That I've trusted Jesus as my Savior and I've set my sight on Jesus as my Master and my Lord. During the Rock the Rock Kids Clubs, uh, you're going to be going to these children in our community and you're primarily going to be introducing them to Jesus as Savior. You're going to be showing them what He did on their behalf. How he came, how he lived for them, how he died for them, how he rose again for them to set them free. And then at the end, you're going to invite them to put their faith and their trust in Jesus as their Savior. 
So you need to get very familiar with Jesus as Savior, right? That's the gospel that you're going to go proclaim. But during boot camp this week, we're going to be asking Jesus not just what does it mean that he's our Savior, because you've got to know how to share that. But what we're going to be doing is this. Jesus, what does it mean for you to be the Lord of my life? What does it mean for me to follow you with every area of my life? Each of these five sessions, I just want to introduce you to a different part of Jesus' way of life. And I just want to tell you up front, I'm a baseball guy. I use a lot of baseball illustrations. The way of Jesus is like throwing a baseball with your wrong hand. You know, have you ever done that? Like if you're, I'm right-handed. If I take a baseball and I'm out in the backyard with my boys and I try to throw left-handed, it looks ridiculous, right? I mean, it doesn't go the right direction. It's not as fast. It's all over the place. It's unnatural to me. You need to know that the way of Jesus is unnatural to you. Everything I'm going to share with you this week, you're going to go, that's not what I feel like doing. That feels like throwing the ball with my left hand. <laughs> that's what the way of Jesus feels like to us. It's the opposite of our natural desires. And that's why you have to have a new heart. That's why you have to lean on the Holy Spirit. And can I just be honest with you? It's why you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Students, look at me. You've got to make a decision. You've got to say, this is who I want to follow. Back to my Twitter illustration. You know when you're on Twitter and, and, and there's somebody that's intriguing to you, you, you make the decision to say, I want to follow that person. You, you click on them and say, I, I want to follow what they say. I want to see what they do with their life. You have to make that decision. Being at church, being here at boot camp, that's not the decision. The decision is to say, I'm going to follow Christ. Your parents can't make that decision for you. I can't. Jacob can't make that decision for you. Our interns, we can't make the decision for you. You have to make that decision. Let's start with just introducing you to one part of the way of Jesus. It's really hard. To follow Jesus, here's a phrase I want you to write down. I'll be real quick on these each week, each night, because I just want to introduce them to you, and I want you to talk about them um, in your discussion groups about what they look like lived out. To follow Jesus, first, means to practice self-denial and humility instead of self-promotion. To follow Jesus means to practice self-denial and humility instead of self-promotion. Now again, remember my illustration of throwing the baseball with the left hand? This is so counter what our heart wants to do. We as human beings have such a strong desire to be seen doing what we're doing when we're doing something right. We have a desire to what I like to call self-promote. And the age of Facebook and Twitter makes this even worse. Because we're doing something and then we want to announce to the world, hey, look at what I'm doing. Look how awesome I am at what I'm doing. It's so easy to self-promote. Jesus, in his teaching, warned us against this in Matthew 6. He says, don't pray, don't fast, and don't give just to be seen by others and receive the applause. Don't do it just to promote yourself. He said, you need to do it in private where nobody can see what you're doing. In Matthew 23, you know Jesus' biggest beef with the religious leaders of his day? Because they were just all about the fame and the glory they could get in, in being out front. He said uh, some of the harshest language in the New Testament, Matthew 23, he told the, the religious leaders, you're hypocrites because all you want is the best seat when they gather for these meals. You just want people to see you and know you and be at the front of the line and everybody praise you. It's all about self-promotion. Jesus says it shouldn't be that way among those who follow him. Jesus warns his followers again and again and again about this danger. 
self-promotion. About telling everybody else, hey, I'm here. I'm so awesome. Don't you guys want to know me? I'm so great. Why did Jesus warn against that? Because he knows the human heart that we want to be seen as great and important. And so even in conversations, even in group settings, we want up each other rather than listening to somebody we're already thinking about what we're going to say. I really can't describe it any better than Brian Regan. So I want you to listen to him warn us about the dangers of what he calls the me monster. Watch this clip. I'm actually kind of quiet off stage. A lot of people don't realize that. I was at a dinner party recently. A bunch of people that I don't know. One guy talking plenty for everybody. Me, myself, right? And then I, and then myself, right? Me, me. I couldn't tell this one about I because I was talking about myself. And then me, me. So I tried to jump in with a little story. I don't want to just sit there the whole night. Right when I'm done with my story, this guy goes, that ain't nothing. <laughs> oh, well, didn't mean to waste everybody's time. <laughs> Telling my nothing story. Here, let Marco Polo speak. He's back with tales of adventure. <laughs> my story ain't nothing. Maybe it wasn't, because I made the mistake of trying to tell a story about having only two wisdom teeth pulled, and I learned a lesson. Don't ever try to tell a two wisdom tooth story, because you ain't going nowhere. The four wisdom teeth people are going to parachute in and cut you off at the pass. Halt! Halt with your two wisdom tooth tail! You will never complete one, trust me. I'm trying to tell my story. You know, I had some wisdom teeth pulled. I had, um... I had two, but I had four pulled. Oh, okay. No, five, no, nine. I had nine wisdom teeth pulled. All of mine were impacted. They were all coming upside down. The roots were out there on my tongue, coming out my nose. They were tusks. I was a warthog. No anesthesia. They pulled them out with pliers. I was eating corn on the cob that afternoon. Pin the blue ribbon upon his chest. <laughs> that knocks the socks off of my wisdom tooth tail. Why do people need to top other people? I've never understood it and I see it all the time. Obviously people get something out of it. At best people wait for your lips to stop. Yeah, as soon as... Okay, yeah, you, me! You, me! You see the difference? You see, you see that? Now I do. What is it about the human condition people get something out of that? That's why I have a social fantasy. I wish I was one of the 12 astronauts who have been on our moon. They must love knowing they can be anybody's story whenever they want. They can sit back quietly at a dinner party while some other person, some me monster, is doing his thing and let him go. Let him run with the line while you be quiet. <laughs> let him have his moment. Yeah, I'm a big traveler. I have my business all. I got my own global enterprise. I got to check on. You know, driving the Autobahn because I keep a fleet of sports cars over in Zurich and I get a Swiss account that I don't want really to check it. Not the Delman Jarks, but it's a man have to cancel that. You know, runway's an aspirin a lot shorter the first time you go in there and you get know, the Pacific Rim company going to try to take that over. And they're like, I'm going to go global enterprise. <laughs> I walked on the moon. <laughs> well, you have the floor, moonwalker. <laughs> you know, you mentioned driving on the Autobahn. That reminded me. Once I was driving in the sea of tranquility. <laughs> in my lunar rover. <laughs> And I too was worried about our speed till I remembered why. We're the only ones on the moon.
Brian does a great job just warning us about that meme monster, right? And I mean, doesn't he describe it so perfectly? You, me, you, me, <laughs> trying to just top each other and promote ourselves. So that's the way that we are naturally. The way of Jesus is the way of humility, the way of self-denial. We see Jesus' humility first in his own life, what he chose to do. Have you thought about the life of Jesus? He left his throne in heaven and lowered himself to be born a baby in a manger to a teenage mother. He grew up in Nazareth, a small, what we would call podunk town in Galilee. He learned the carpenter trade from his father, Joseph. He traveled as itinerant preacher and going from city to city, he told those that he had no home to call his own. As he traveled, the crowds would press in on him and he would feed them and he would serve them, and he would heal them, and he would teach them, and he would pray for them, and he would care for them. Jesus showed us by his life what it looks like to lay down, this is important, what we deserve, what we feel like we deserve for the good of others. Paul talks about it, Philippians 2, 5-8. Philippians 2, 5 to 8. Just listen. Just listen. Paul says, Make your attitude the same as Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. You mean? You think Jesus could have done that? You think Jesus could have won up anybody? Amen. Instead, verse 7, it says he emptied himself. Isn't that the opposite of what you think he would do? By assuming the form of a slave, taking the likeness of men, when he had come as a man in external form, he humbled himself. There's the word. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Listen, if you want to pursue Jesus, you've got to pursue humility because Jesus was humble. That's what I, my main point tonight. Jesus was humble, and you need to pursue him in that. But we also see denial, self-denial, and humility in not just his life, but his teaching. He told us that's the way we're supposed to live. Listen to Matthew 23, 11 and 12. Just two verses, and I'm done. The greatest among you, Jesus said, and I want you to hear this for this week, the greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself, me monster, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew 23, 11 and 12. That's out of the mouth of Jesus. Jesus said, if you promote yourself, you need to know something. God will humble you. But if you humble yourself... God will lift you up. This message is found in other places in the Bible. It's said this way. God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. If you're going to follow Christ, you have to follow him into his teaching on humility. Listen real carefully. Pride, self-promotion, me monster, has always been the primary sin in the Bible. The Bible says Satan failed because he wanted to be like God. Adam and Eve's first temptation. Satan said, if you eat this, you will be like God. You see, the temptation was self-promotion. Promote me. I want to be like God. I don't want everybody to worship Jesus. I want them to worship me. Jesus said the way of the kingdom is the way of humility. 
The way of this world is self-exaltation, self-glorification, self-promotion. You put out your album, your CD, your jersey, everybody wears your stuff, your clothes, your name on everything, your Facebook, your Twitter, get your name out there, make your name for yourself. That's the message of this world. The message of this world is not see those who need help around you and help them. The message of this world is not give glory to God because He alone deserves it. The message of this world is not submit to God's will because His will is better than your will. The message of this world is do whatever you want because your will's better. Pursue your glory because you're worth more than God. Forget other people. Just do what's best for you. That's the message of this world. The way of Jesus is the opposite of that. The way of Jesus is the opposite of that. It's self-denial and humility. Now when I say that, and I'll wrap up with this thought, humility is not beating yourself up. Humility is not, I'm no good, I'm not worth anything, nobody cares about me, I can never do anything with my life. That's not humility. That's low self-esteem. But you know what that is? It's still thinking about yourself all the time. Some of you have low self-esteem and you're still fixated on yourself. Here's humility. Write down this phrase. This is my key phrase for you with humility. Humility is self-forgetfulness. Humility is forgetting yourself and being caught up in God and caught up in others. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. It's thinking about others more. So how do we do that? Here's my key application for you, and I want you to just figure it out as you spend time with God this week. Can I challenge you, if you're going to follow Jesus, to do something kind for somebody else this week without being asked to do it? Let's make it real concrete. Here's the challenge. You're going to be humble like Jesus. Get outside of yourself and see somebody else this week. Can you do that? It's hard. Especially hard when you're insecure as a teenager and you're really concerned about how the people see you and what they think about you. To step outside of that and say, this week, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm not going to be worried about what everybody else thinks of me or what crowd I run with or who says what about me. I'm going to step outside of that and I'm going to see other people. Can you do that? What if you did this this week? What if you noticed, you, you just looked around and you just were aware that somebody needed to help pick up the trash? And you, nobody asked you, you just humbled yourself and you just stepped in and you said, I'm just going to do that. What if you looked around at boot camp and you saw somebody that's one of the teenagers here at camp, listen, sitting by themselves during a meal time? And you saw that person. You actually saw them. You saw the need. And nobody had to ask you. You just stepped out. You walked over. You said, hey, can I, can I have lunch with you? Are you, you going to come sit with us? That's the way of Jesus right there. What if you did this? What if when you're doing these kids clubs for Point Community Church this week, what if instead of being concerned about how you look and who you're hanging with during the kid club, what if you walked over to a child who didn't have any friends and you said to that kid, hey, can I be your friend today? Can I just hang out with you during the club? That's the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is seeing other people, not seeing yourself, but seeing them. What if, what if you just noticed that that kid over there, that, that student, that, that adult, that, they seem to be really hot. I bet I could take him a bottle of water. And don't freak out when you do that, nobody sees you. Nobody says anything. You don't get any recognition. Jacob doesn't call you up here and be like, this is a model of following Jesus. Like nobody knows. Nobody sees except God. That's the way of Jesus right here. You're not doing it to get your name uh, up on the screen. 
You're not doing it because so Keith will say something about you from the front. You're just doing it because that's what Jesus modeled for you. And you said, I want to be like him. Now I say all that. You say, do you see why I said at the beginning? If you don't think Jesus is worth following, you won't do this kind of stuff. Because it's hard. It's throwing the baseball with the other hand. And it's not going to feel natural to you. You're going to want to hang out with your friends and do what feels good to you and what's natural to you. And that's not the way Jesus. Can we be people of the way this week? The first step in doing that is to pursue humility and not self-promotion. We pray for you. God, thank you for speaking to us and just the model and the teaching of Jesus that we would think about others ahead of ourselves. God, if I'm honest tonight, um, this is just really difficult and we need your help. Father, I fall into the trap so many times of just doing what whatever feels good to me and brings me attention and fame. But that's not the way of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid for our pride and selfishness on the cross and that we, you have forgiven all that. But we want to move forward and to be a people who are humble and that we're focused on serving others. This week, wow, what a powerful time, powerful opportunity to live for others. I pray that you would speak into the lives of these students, that you change their heart, that they would really begin to be not fixated on themselves, that they would be living for your glory and the good of others. Help us, Lord, now to follow you in this way. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow.
great way to get started tonight. You guys go ahead and take a seat for just a second. I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen next. Listen, at the end of each session, what we're going to do after we've worshipped, after we've heard from God, is I want you to get with your groups. And I want you just to spend some time in your small teams, okay, your small teams, talking about what God has said to you. So 